Okay. Great. So welcome everyone to this uh, lecture on digital innovation. And we're going to talk today about actually service and service innovation. And we will put it in the context of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, digital uh, service innovation. And um, today I'm going to share this uh, slides with you. So um, I assume you can see the slides now. So um, introduction to service, and we're going to learn about what service is and what is value creation through service. And we're going to talk a bit about uh, digital transformation and uh, how can service actually uh, be understood and can uh, create or, or influence transformation. So um, questions we need to reflect together on. So why do we need to study service and what kind of services that we can recognize uh, during our work or around us? And uh, when do we say that there is a certain service has a certain quality? To start with, uh, we live uh, nowadays in a service economy or service driven economy, uh, meaning we can't survive in our daily life without services. And uh, uh, for example, in the morning when we wake up in the morning, we need to go to school to work, we need to use. Uh, uh, a, trans a transportation system, for example, which is a service, and we need uh, this service needs infrastructure. It needs um, uh, uh, laws and regulations, and uh, it needs buses. Buses needs manufacturing, and uh, you name it. All those together uh, are called uh, ecosystem. So our service ecosystem, meaning that service can be always understood within a wider service uh, ecosystem and without actually this service ecosystem that we live in it's pretty hard for us to survive in our daily life as i said also you can take samples of, of our uh, in our daily life uh, electricity we need electricity we need housing system we need water system and you name it so our survival is is depending so much on actually services and uh, in economies, why we call the service economy? Because nowadays, even most of the economies are actually based on service, uh, which is a bit contradicting uh, or contrasting from the previous uh, view on, uh, on, 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 on economy, which was mainly about manufacturing. Nowadays, we live in, as I said, service-driven economy. And uh, service, by focusing on service, actually economies and businesses are able to be sustainable. And uh, sustainability means that uh, a business can create profit uh, without harming the environment or the society. I have some uh, examples here I put on, on um, the slide where I'm gonna talk about Volvo and uh, Airbnb and even iPhone uh, or the phone, the apps how such services together transformed our uh, our life and they actually uh, disrupt the uh, the previous kind of uh, uh, industry that was uh, prevailed uh, before so talking about volvo for example volvo now is moving from manufacturing focusing on manufacturing to focus on the service uh, volvo uh, for example when it comes to truck uh, trucks uh, section uh, they are now uh, uh, making their money by leasing trucks, by providing systems on the truck and they can charge for so they can get more money. Uh, while before they used to get money only by manufacturing the truck. This kind of transformation that happened allowed them, as I said, to be more sustainable and profit profitable and sustainable, meaning making money uh, on a longer period of time without hurting the environment. Same thing about uh, Apple. Apple disrupted the telecommunication company that was controlled and dominated by Nokia, for example, back in time. What they have done, actually, uh, it's not only the phone that we can see, uh, the iPhone, the touch uh, screen. That's uh, one part of the uh, change that has been created. The main change was actually to involve customers 
and users in creating apps, uh, which is a service that allow people to, 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 to solve their problems or provide solutions for their daily life. Uh, you name it from, from uh, dating apps to communication apps to uh, uh, apps that help like calculator and, 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 and so on. So uh, these kind of apps actually have, many of them have been developed by users, by a single user. And uh, what iPhone did is providing, providing users and, 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 and uh, customers with uh, the platform, the, the digital platform, which really changed the way value is created or co-created. Uh, and why I'm saying co-created, because back in time, um, uh, value has been always understood that the company create the value, create the product and put and release it in the market. While nowadays, it's actually the other way around. Users create value for themselves and for others. You create an app that you use for your daily life, but you also put it on a platform that allow other people to share and use and you make money out of it. So this uh, customer-centric and uh, involving customer in the value creation has actually transformed the market. So now uh, Apple as a company is, 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 is kind of very profitable company and uh, they make out of money actually not from producing the iPhone, rather from the App Store, which is the great transformation in the industry. Another example I would like to talk about, Airbnb, which is a digital platform that enable users to rent out or rent uh, extra spaces, uh, apartments and uh, housing and uh, uh, villas. This has not been done before. So Airbnb disrupt the market. And how this happened actually by service. Who, th who could imagine back in time to host a person that as a totally stranger person that you have never met before and you, uh, you allow this person to come to your place. You can even like leave the key outside this, uh, the door and allow the person to come inside and sleep in a room just next to your sleeping room. This ha no one thought about it like uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago. But nowadays, it's actually uh, something that is, 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 is a reality nowadays. And uh, what Airbnb has done, they actually, by service, they could, uh, we call it break a certain uh, social norm, which is, as I said, people are normally, or they, like, their norm was at that time was people don't really host strangers. They broke that by the service, which is offering the host, for example, guarantee and insurance, if something went wrong, they will stand for. So by service, many companies could really disrupt the, the, uh, the industry and transform it. And digital platform, platforms really played uh, a major role in this transformation. So what is service after talking about uh, service in general or services? Service actually, as we can see in this picture, it's the application of resources or can be understood as the integration of resources. So in this picture, we see doctors, nurses collaborating together to perform a service, which is a surgery or a medication. So who uh, who is involved in this service we can simply see doctors nurses humans but we can see also very important the customer which is the patient without a customer the service itself won't really be performed but at the same time we can see doctors and nurses using resources these kind of resources can be the scissors can be the heart uh, uh, device that can control the, the, the heartbeats of the patient. It can be also the clothing. Those resources are, are involved, but also the lightning, the, uh, the, uh, the room, 
also it's part of the resource. One of the most important resource or, 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 or thing we need to consider all the time when we look at service is actually the institutions. And institutions here means the uh, norms and rules uh, and regulations that is available in the in the society, meaning not any person can perform this operation. The person has to, has to have a diploma, for example, as a doctor, and this is very important. And this is done by by a certain degree given by the the, for example, the country where the doctor lives in, and. Uh, also, we can't perform an operation uh, wherever in the, in, in, the, in the street. We need actually a place where it's suitable for, for performing such an operation. And this place has to have certain standards like in the hospital. So institutions shape the way service is being performed. And then, uh, uh, as I said, uh, service is defined here as economic or social activity performed by one actor to another, a doctor to a patient, uh, Airbnb as an organization to customers, often time-based, uh, meaning it takes time and uh, availability of time is very important for actors to perform a service. This service actually brings value to the recipients. The value that can be seen in operation, which is medication, it can be seen as uh, transportation for a student going to the university, it can be seen as uh, beauty or like when you go to a hairdresser. This is value, it's a benefit that someone receives from the other in exchange of money, time and effort. Service is always understood through resource integration, as I said, when I use my resources that I have, as I said, the doctor, but the most important resource that the doctor has is not only the, the, the tools, the, what we call it the operand resources, it's actually the skills that the doctor has and the nurses. This kind of skill is the major skill, we call it operand resources. It's a major important skill for performing the service. Actors, when we define actors, are can be citizens, can be customers, can be companies, can be governments, or can be a nation state, like as in, a, in the entire, uh, uh, it's a government, or as I said, a, a country. So resources can be operant and operant, uh, meaning uh, the physical and the skills and knowledge, and resources are becoming, meaning the resource has no value till it is being used. And that's why we call it value in use. And then actors have agency on resources, as it says here. They have agency on resources that they integrate, actually, to create value for themselves and others. Meaning uh, a doctor probably performed the, the, the operation to the benefit of the, for, to the, to the direct benefit of the patient. But also there is indirect benefit, which is, the family of the patient, for example, are, are glad and happy for the success of the operation. Uh, so the service doesn't only imply direct benefit, it can be indirect benefit to other actors. And uh, what is also very important to understand that value, the value of any uh, service is actually take, takes place in a certain social context, meaning what is what is valuable for us in Sweden might be a bit different from what is valuable in, in, in another, another country or other social context. Uh, let's talk, uh, for example, about cars. The benefit, the value I get from uh, a car in Sweden in a city, a small city, like let's say like Malmo, I need just a car that, uh, for example, take me from A to B. This is because this is social, our social system uh, is designed actually to, to reduce the car, car uh, usage, for example, uh, parking are expensive and so on. But if you go to Germany, for example, people 
think that the value of car is not only just to take me from A to B, but also it represents social status, where people think like this is a very important uh, thing. A car is a very important thing to me because it represents who I am. So the same thing, the car, for example, the benefit, the value of the car differs from a country to a country or social status, a social system to a social system, which is very different. And uh, from here, there is uh, a term in service, we call it value in social context, which means, as I said, the value that the service offers, it's only understood contextuals when in a certain context. Now we're gonna move a bit to service innovation. And service innovation, as we were talking about service, innovation is service might be defined or might be understood a bit different from uh, other innovation. Product innovation might be a new product that is uh, uh, revolution or revolutionary, for example, talking about, let's say, uh, a phone or a new, uh, a new uh, kind of car that is a bit uh, uh, totally new. But in service, when we talk about service innovation, we talk about something a bit different. First, innovation, service innovation is understood by how uh, the service can create or for how, or how uh, to what extent uh, the service actually serve the customers. Uh, it's because we need a service because it has to provide solutions to our social, our, our social problems. Uh, but uh, not, which is a bit different from the product innovation. So therefore, service innovation actually is considered as the DNA, uh, or the DNA of the service innovation is actually considered as challenging. And it's about also challenging the institutionalized norms and rules and habits for the actors and configuring actors and resources in novel and useful ways in service ecosystem. Meaning, uh, as I, as I uh, gave an example on Airbnb, Airbnb actually disrupted the, 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 the norms and challenged the institutionalized norms by which was before people are not allowed or not able to host a stranger. Now it moves to a, a, a point where people can simply open their houses to any person who is part of this platform to stay over. So it has been, this has been an innovation, a service innovation, because it challenged an institutionalized norm and rule and habit. Same thing if we look at Spotify, for example. Back in time, uh, we used to listen to music through cassettes. Then now we can listen to it through live streaming. But this is not the main, uh, main service innovation. Service innovation that Spotify, for example, is offering is actually the ability of normal users to record and upload their, their own lyrics and their own songs on Spotify and allow other actors and other users to listen to it. And uh, if it gets successful, for example, one of those uh, uh, users or singers or individual singer can be, uh, can be recruited by those big company, record companies, uh, which, is, which has totally changed the way value is being uh, created back in time. So uh, that's thanks to digitalization, actually, and uh, having the ability to, to, uh, to, to uh, be part of this service uh, creation, the value creation. Uh, I just uh, wrote, or like I uh, quoted this uh, definition by Edvard von Tromvold, 2013, which I really found very interesting. Service innovation is actually changes in, is institutionalized changes in service system structure due to new configuration of resources or actors, schemas, resulting in new practices that are valuable enough for the involved actors 
and to make it sustainable, to make the service sustainable. Uh, one of the drivers of service innovation is actually information technology. So because information technology enabled development of the service innovation. As I said, in the idea of Spotify, the idea of, of, of Airbnb, without the uh, information technology, the ICTs, information and communication technology, uh, service innovation won't be uh, able to, to take place. Uh, examples are, are uh, clearly, as we talked about, Airbnb, can be Skype, can be Uber, and you name it. Information technology enable service providers to gain information that enhance resource integration and value co-creation. For example, nowadays, many customers are able to design their shoes online, uh, design their recipe. Uh, I did myself actually research on a company called Italy. And Italy is one of those restaurants. It's an Italian restaurant. They are very innovative. And uh, we can clearly see service innovation in the way they actually engage customers uh, to design or, or make their own recipe, food recipe, and cook it in store or in the restaurant. And when this recipe and the well, food that is cooked is innovative and it's delicious, they, the company actually promote it and try to cook it indoors and sell it to people. So they turned individuals into chefs and they make value out of it. And this is a clear service innovation. If there are any questions so far, please interrupt me. Uh, I can just see that this is for me a very clear summary or a small summary to service innovation and what is service. Do you see or have any question or follow up? Well, um, do you hear me, Kotaiba? I hear you, I'm here. Yeah, uh, good. So, uh, thank you thank for you. this presentation. And uh, the thing that I was thinking about ecosystem uh, and service ecosystem, because uh, I mean, if you, if you check the highest literature on ecosystem, like uh, the papers of uh, Gower, Jakubidis, uh, Sanamo, Santalo, these people were around ecosystem. The way that they defined ecosystem or ecosystem categories are basically divided into innovation ecosystem, business ecosystem, and platform ecosystem. Uh, I mean, um, the first part was that I hadn't find any like research stream, like, like a body of literature on service ecosystem. Service ecosystem might be joint part of any of these three areas. And for example, on Uber case or Airbnb case, mm -hmm. Um, that I, I found them more into platform economy rather than service economy or service innovation. I, I see the benefit of platform thinking and uh, that kind of approach in uh, success of uh, uh, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether, I mean, the other thing that I wanted to talk was basically about this digital platform thing. I think one, I mean, digital platform as one of the several types of platforms helps to facilitate the resources and interaction, coordination, transaction between the actors in that ecosystem around the platform. But the way that it um, transformed or not transformed, but disrupted the hotel business is basically due to the um, platform economy and that kind of multi-sided market concept rather than digital-ness of 
uh, the platform. So the dig the digit the platform itself or the digital platform is just a mediator. How, this is this is how I, I see it. It's not the ecosystem. It's a mediator. It's what enable it's an enab enabler. What enable other users and actors to collaborate and to create value, but it's not the, uh, but, it's not the economy. But this, this is the, the perhaps this is the area that we have some sort of uh, um, different opinion on that. I think digital uh, digital uh, um, platforms by itself does not disrupt anything, and this multi-sided market function of the platform is the way that it's changed the, the, the way. So like in previous way, we had linear sort of uh, business model. We have some resources here. And then on the other hand, we have some users that we use them. Uh, we will give th those assets, not resources, those assets to the users. But with this multi-sided market, they have engaged different actors with sort of, according to Annabelle Gower, uh, low asset platforms rather than heavy assets, for example. So don't you think that it's basically connecting several users to several or several travelers here to several housekeepers, house owners, that is the key here rather than the digital uh, part of that? What I see the disruption or the change in the industry itself, as I said, it's not the platform. It's just how the platform enabled actors such as uh, a, a house owner somewhere far from the city center who was it was very hard for him or her back in time just to be, you know, like to have a, a sign where it says, uh, I have a place to rent. The platform enabled him easily to be part and to be engaged and active, uh, active participant in the value creation. So the platform. Okay. So here the question is that does digital make it enable to do that or it's just facilitate that? Enabler means facilitator. No, th that's the point. So it's different. So you can, ha you, without having any digital solution, you can connect several people by just calling them or posting some notes to, for example, on very traditional way, on newspaper to connect this one to that one. And that is basically marketplace. So, and that is platform economy, pl platform mindset, multi-sided mindset, platform thinking, not digital platform by itself. But then digital uh, technology would facilitate that, would make it uh, grow uh, iterative and then go exponential fast, if you see my point. Yeah, so, you, you, so because, do you see it because as the digital facilitator? Sorry? Do you see it enabler or facilitator? It's facilitator of network effects around the platform. Without digital technology, you still can have the platform in traditional way as the multi-sided market. Like in, if you search, if you search Bacalaria, which is um, a multi-sided market, a platform in traditional way, it's used to be a very traditional way distributor of several different things in Kuwait, in Middle East, mm -hmm. without using digital uh, solutions. They just call and they record whatever this company may need, that company may need, and they distribute that, those goods, without having any technical layer platform. But then they have created a technical layer platform and then they get engaged yet another um, party on that, and then they create network effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a yeah. good Do you have any other question, Amir, or any uh, kind of... Uh... Well, 
No, it was it was interesting discussion. It was very interesting uh, topic, actually. This is by uh, the service ecosystem transformation and deformation or change in general is actually my uh, the PhD uh, topic. I see. Where I'm studying how companies, as I said, could actually change the way value creation in understood within an ecosystem in order to transform uh and uh, transform an ecosystem an industry you name it or a nation state like a country yeah then in that case i think uh, when it comes to transformation or transforming the business model of that i would say that to transform the business model of a business to transform the business model of a company it's not necessary to go for platformization to use the platform servicification is another area that you can transform a business without even uh, going to apply platform economy mindset. So, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, what, that's my point. So, I, uh, I mean, the, the example I gave you about Italy, the uh, Italian, uh, it's a restaurant. There is no platform. There is no digital platform, but there is a platform exactly. in a sense like, a place, a, a marketplace where people come together and exchange resources. That's what I meant. But this place can be digital or physical. Yeah, I mean, when it, when it's not digital, it's basically a marketplace, a multi-sided market, and that multi-sided market theory driven by uh, Gower, Dakubidis, uh, and Kusumano. These people are one thing but i mean even without technical layer about digital or without anything you can go for servicification like in skf case they used to produce bulb rings and products for uh, lubricants and such uh, and now they have changed their business model from producing the products into selling the production time. Like, we will facilitate no matter what, goes, no matter how often should we change that, maintain it, that, this kind of thing. So this is another um, sort of approach in uh, changing business model without platform thinking even. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Great. So Perfect. Do you have any, any feedback? Pardon? Uh, I just asked Sovomir if he has any uh, feedback or any question. Yeah, I, I think it was it was really interesting. It's uh, maybe maybe one thing that I was a little bit missing was uh, a more concrete example. I mean, a, a lot of what you said was on very general level. Uh, I think it, it would be really interesting to, to learn more about how this works in practice. And everybody heard about the okay, iPhone change our world and so on. But uh, how, how do you do those kinds of things? How, how can you actually make those changes? And, and you mentioned Volvo switching from selling vehicles to now uh, transportation services, but they are really, really struggling with it. They, they are talking about doing this for decades now and i don't think they have really figured it out so so i think learning more about the, the kind of challenges with it would be really really interesting sure mm -hmm. cool uh, lost your wild volvo uh, since i Sorry, Amir, there needs to be a problem with the connection. Amir, I can't hear you at all. Okay, can you hear me now? No, I can. Now it works better. Yeah, I was just confirming what, what I've heard from Slow Amir. So it's, it's very uh, hard task to, to go for transformation. Mm -hmm. You said something about Volvo, uh, Amir. 
Yeah, on Volvo, I know that since I've done the third year, three year on Volvo case, I know that they are still still far from transforming their business model to transport solution provider. I wish Reza was here to to uh, um, because I did actually my PhD within the project with Reza. Oh yeah, mindset. So they are you still they are still suffering, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, the, what, what I it's just I read the case about uh, Volvo um, uh, implementing this kind of um, a business model with like with service in 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 Brazil with trucks in Brazil. In, in Brazil. And uh, my understanding was that they were re doing really well. Yeah, it can be a good example for servicification in some sense, but being transport solution provider is still a very, very high, uh, high level ambition sort of uh, goal and vision, I would say. Mm -hmm. I see. And that is because, because of the platform mindset, not digital platform, but platform economy mindset that they should use any asset any resource I mean if they want to be transport provider maybe they should also collaborate with Tesla maybe they should use Scania's vehicles or Mercedes vehicles for transportation and that is a true ecosystem thinking that they are they are I think they are not still there no that that they are trying to, to switch to services without really switching to ecosystem. And I'm not sure if it, this actually can work. Uh, do, you, uh, do, do you have any like guess why do you think it won't work? Just because a service itself without being understood in a service ecosystem, you mean? That's why? No, because of the legacy that these uh, incumbent firms have. Uh, they used to be the product owner. And in order to change their mindset to platform thinking and that multi-sided market mindset is, um, is a huge gap. And they still stuck into their own resources. They want to use their own, only their own resources like truck as a resource. But to be a truly transport solution provider, no matter what resource do you use, you should give the best quality, fastest, safest, and uh, cheapest price service. Exactly. I, I can see the point. Yep. Good. I have to leave now, but thank you for today. Uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, uh, lecture. Thank you. Omri. Thanks for coming, actually. So for yeah. me, thank you so thank much you. as well for thank joining. You. Yeah, it was very interesting. Thank you. Bye bye. bye for now. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.